Hi, welcome to section six, testing and monitoring your Azure functions. Now in our previous section, we went over a serverless architecture and you're gonna find that the more and more you rely on a serverless architecture, the more important it is to be able to monitor and test your Azure functions to make sure everything is running smoothly. In this section, we'll show you how you can keep tabs on what's happening in your function apps. In this section, we're going to take a look at testing our Azure functions using c -sharp integration tests in Visual Studio. And then we're going to do some calling and testing Azure functions with Postman. Then I want to talk about monitoring our Azure functions and getting insight in how they're working. And then we'll debug our Azure functions from Visual Studio. And that brings us to our first video, c -sharp integration tests. In this video, we're going to create a simple function app that sums two numbers and returns the result. We'll create a Visual Studio solution with a unit test project in it. And then we're going to write some tests that cover those cases that we expect. And then I want to go briefly over the pros and cons of this approach for using this for monitoring and testing your Azure function apps. All right, I want to go to new and then let's click on compute and scroll down, and look for function app. And then for the app name, we just need to type in something unique. We're going to do monitoring and testing P. Oliver. I like a resource group that starts with RG. Choose a location close by and choose a storage name that looks good for you. Click create. And it takes a little time to create. So we'll fast forward a little bit here to make it uh, not waste your time watching this. But it takes about 30 seconds to get everything to deploy. And when you're ready, we're going to go ahead and navigate to this new function app. And here, we're just going to create a new function. Choose Create Your Own Function and Filter to C-sharp. And we're going to choose HTTP Trigger C-sharp. Let's just name it Sum Numbers. And the authorization level is fine. We'll create this. And we're just going to change this function a little bit. Right now, it takes a name on the query string. But we want it to take two numbers, num1 and num2. So this first one will be num1 string. And then we'll do num2 string. I'll just copy and paste from above. So it takes num2. Then uh, we want to convert these numbers to integers. So we're going to make a function called string to nullable int, which will convert the two. They need to be nullable because we, you know, we might pass in an integer on the query string or in the body. So nullable will help us figure out which one is which. So the function will look like this. String to nullable int takes an input. And we're just going to do uh, like a try parse and we will return the value that we parsed. Otherwise, we'll just return null. And want to make sure everything's here. This looks good. And then what we'll do is we'll see if either of them are null. And then we're going to just try to read it from the body, the request body. And in this case, you can just kind of copy the code below. So it's a dynamic object. And I'm just going to paste it over here. In this case, we're reading the request content. And we're just going to set the numbers. So if num1 is already defined, we're not going to override it. If num2 is already defined, we won't override it. We'll just use the value from the body. And in this case, uh, we, we just want to say if num1 is null, then we need to return. We'll log it, and then we're going to return it in the re response. We'll use a status code of bad request. And then we'll say, please pass in num1 on the query string or in the request body. And let's copy the same logic. We'll do the same for num2. Let's fix the indenting here and just change the num1s to num2. Okay, so we have this response, and it's still the old response for returning the name. We obviously want to return the sum, so let's calculate it, and then we're gonna record that we are returning okay with the sum for the two inputs. And then we just need to uh, return the uh, a response of type status code of okay, and then the sum. And then when we save it, we see compilation succeeded, and so we can just test this. We can change the request body, pass num1, and of course we can just put in like some numbers, five and six, and let's run it. And then scroll down, we can see that the output is 11. And in the log, we can actually see that it's returning uh, 11 for inputs five and six. So if we wanted to test it on the query string, we'd change it to a get request. And then let's add two parameters. Let's do num1, which is six, num2, which is seven and we can leave the body alone. It's going to use a query string. We see it's outputting 13 and then logs it properly. Okay, so jump over to Visual Studio. We wanna unit test this. So we'll use new unit test project called Azure Function Unit Test. Technically it's an integration test, so I probably can name it integration test instead. Let's refactor this a bit. So I'm gonna change the name of the class to just, we'll call it some numbers 
tests just because I don't like the default name. And we're, we can test this function here, but we're going to need to first, let's do a few things to our project to add it first. First, right click on your project name, click on add, and then use new item. And we want to do a config file because we need to store things. So just filter on config and just use application config file. And you'll get a new file called app config. And we need to have some app settings in here for three things. So let's add the node for app settings. And then we need our function app key. Then we're going to need our URL base and then our sum function name so that we can rename it if we have to. Don't have to change the tests. Where do we get the values here? So go back to Azure Functions and copy the URL that it gives you. We're just using the default key. And then I'm going to paste it in here and then we'll just grab what we need out of it. So first off, for URL base, we just need everything up after up to the API. We don't need this code part. So I'm going to paste it up here for function app key. And that is going to be needed for security reasons. And then we just need all the way up to the API. Now that we have those config settings, we can, you know, call the function from our unit test. But we still need to do a few more things. We want to go to NuGet packages. And we're going to install ResSharp which is a great REST client for, for .NET. There is a .NET Core version if you're building a, a .NET standard library that should work. And then go ahead and add this. Let's close the extra files. And now we can actually write a unit test. We'll call this one get with num1 and num2 undefined and it should return an error response. And we need this REST sharp client defined. So let's make a helper function. It returns an iREST client and it's called make client. And we're gonna read from the the config file that we added the app config but we need to reference one more library so let's go to references add a reference to system.configuration so just filter around it and this is pretty standard library to add if you want to read from a config file and it's really wordy so let's just do configuration manager app settings resharper added a using statement for me but you need to add using system.configuration so you can use the shortened uh, reference there and let me Expand the browser or the uh, editor a little bit. And then the client is going to use that URL base that we read from the config file. And now we returned it. Now we need to do a request. And so we need a new helper here. We're going to call it make request sum. So let's return an iREST request and read the app key from the configuration file in the app settings. It's called function app key. This is in your app config if you want to look up what that key name is. And then, of course, we need to look up the sum function name. And then we're going to make a request and it takes that name and then it's a get request and we just return it. So then we can use this in our test up above. And so here we can say the response is equal to client.get and we pass in the request. And we just want to make sure that that error string comes back and it's a string with quotes. So that's why I'm escaping the, the string here. And then we're going to do response and then we want to make sure that it's a bad request coming back. Of course, that string is coming back from this line of code in the function. So if you wanted to check and see where I'm getting this from, there it is for num1 and num2. So this test, again, we only fail on num1 if that's null. So we don't check num2. If num one's already bad, might as well just return that. And um, our test is failing, and it looks like it is trying to compare a string with a REST request. And so I'm looking here. Well, another thing is we aren't passing the, uh, the code in the get function URL. We're not passing that. And that's a query string parameter, and that's easy to add in uh, REST Sharp. So let's add that to our request. So we, what we need to do is underneath the request, we're going to just add a, a parameter to it. So you can just request add query parameter. It's code, and it's the app key that we read from the config file in line 31. And what this will do is it'll generate a URL, and it'll just pass that code equals app key. But then we also need to pass in num1 and num2 in some of our tests, and we'll do that on the tests that we need it for. But now that I pass the code in, I'm going to try to run it again, and we see that the test is failing. And now I can see why. I'm comparing it with the response object, and I need the content. So I'm going to compare that string with the content, and now we should get it to work. And there you go. So, so that first test is passing. Let's make a few more tests. Obviously, we need a test for num2 missing from the request for and then also for both of them but this first test is just going to test that num one's defined but not num2 and we should get an error message in this case we're going to add the query parameter for num1 and we'll just pass in a one 
and then the response after we call the request. When we return it, we expect the num2 error string. So please pass in num2 in the query string or in the request body and in the content. And we could also check that it's still a bad uh, request when we run it. That's another thing we could do. But let's just run this to see if it works. And it's passing. Test is passing. So we are getting that error message like we expect. And now let's go down here and we're going to make a test method where num1 and num2 are defined. And it should return the sum. So we're going to pass in 1 and 2 and I expect to get 3 back. Add the query parameters uh, for num1, add the query parameter for num2, and then get the response. And then what we'll do is we will parse, uh, or we'll read the response content, and it should be three, and make sure it's a OK status code, which is a 200. And we can just run all the tests right from the, this is the uh, test runner from ReSharper. Use your test runner of choice. Use your test framework of choice. This should all work. We can check the logs and make sure that it is receiving those calls, which we'd expect it to. And we are seeing that it's returning three for one and two. And that came, of course, from our unit test or our integration test. So it gives us confidence that everything is working as expected. So what are the pros and cons of using integration tests with Azure Functions? Well, uh, the tests are visible to all the developers that have access to the source control. This is a good thing, of course. Um, the tests can be run frequently. They can be run as you develop code. They can be run and uh, they can be run in an automated fashion, like during your build process. But we have a few cons to think about. Um, the integration tests, being that they are reliant on the the network and also some database or whatever bindings you use in your function apps, they can be brittle. And when they break, it might not be because of some logic errors. It could be just because the internet's down or there's an outage. The tests can only be created by developers and the calls to the function app use cloud resources. So if you are using way too many calls per second, you can actually directly affect your function apps that are running on the same subscription. So what did we learn? Well, we created a simple function app that sums two numbers, returning the result. We created a Visual Studio solution with a unit test project in it. And in that unit test project, we wrote some tests to cover the cases that we expect. And then finally, we covered the pros and cons of this approach for keeping tabs on your Azure functions.